Hi, this is Dr. A, and this video is featuring the work of one of my students, Natalie Dumas, and uh, her subject is procalcitonin. Hey, my name is Natalie Dumas, and this is my project on procalcitonin. The level of procalcitonin in the blood can increase significantly in systemic bacterial infections, tissue injuries, and sepsis. Procalcitonin laboratory tests measure the amount of procalcitonin in the blood. It is synthesized primarily in the C cells of the thyroid gland, where it then undergoes intracellular cleavage to produce calcitonin. Calcitonin comes from the perifollicular cells of the thyroid and acts on veins. Procalcitonin is a biomarker that exhibits greater specificity than other pro-inflammatory markers in identifying sepsis and other bacterial infections. It's an acute phase reactant that responds to inflammatory stimuli. High levels are not usually associated with viral agents or non-infectious inflammatory stimuli. When released, it does not lead to an increase in serum calcitonin levels. When procalcitonin enters the circulation, it remains unchanged with a half-life of around 24 to 36 hours with no evidence that procalcitonin binds to calcitonin. High levels of procalcitonin may be seen in medullary thyroid cancer, but the test should not be used to diagnose or monitor this condition. It is not considered a replacement test for the performance of other laboratory tests. Early detection of systemic bacterial infections is important. Procalcitonin provides additional information that may allow appropriate treatment to be initiated or discontinued sooner. The test itself is still being studied in additional populations expanding beyond ICU patients. As more data is gathered, its clinical usefulness will be better understood and its extended uses will be fully defined. Procalcitonin's physiologic importance in production is not well understood. It's believed to have effects on the metabolism of calcium, the cytokine network, modulation of nitric oxide synthesis, and pain relieving effects. No enzymes in the plasma break it down, and studies have been done to see if it can be helpful in antibiotic therapy because of its half-life in the blood. Levels of procalcitonin will drop in a matter of days once the underlying infectious stimulant has been removed. Sepsis is the body's serious, overwhelming, and sometimes life-threatening inflammatory response to a bacterial infection. Some infections may lead to bacteremia, and in sepsis, the body produces a generalized inflammatory response to the infection. Symptoms of sepsis are significant rise or fall in body temperature, increased heart rate and breathing rate, and a decrease in blood pressure. Studies have shown in these patients Higher procalcitonin levels are associated with greater risk of progression to severe sepsis and septic shock. This worsens the prognosis of these patients. Procalcitonin is useful to help detect sepsis and severe bacterial infections in the early stages. Some conditions that increase procalcitonin levels are sepsis, trauma, surgery, pancreatitis, burns, cardiogenic shock related to heart attack, organ transplant rejection, kidney involvement with urinary tract infections in children, gram-negative bacteremia. Procalcitonin can be used to aid in the diagnosis of sepsis or sepsis indicators. It distinguishes bacterial infections from viral infections. It can also help detect secondary bacterial infections. These secondary infections are detected in patients who may have tissue damage due to trauma, surgery, or another illness. It can also be used to help guide antibiotic treatment and monitor the effectiveness of these therapies. Some of the laboratory tests that may be ordered alongside procalcitonin to help aid in diagnosis or treatment of a patient is the C-reactive protein, urine cultures or blood cultures, lactate, blood gases, complete blood counts, or cerebrospinal fluid analysis. The C-reactive protein, also known as a CRP, is the most common laboratory marker used in the clinical setting to evaluate systemic inflammatory response to an infectious agent. Procalcitonin is more useful in being a diagnostic parameter in patients with pediatric neutropenic fever. 
Procalcitonin is also a more reliable pr parameter when diagnosing sepsis in patients. Procalcitonin is a useful marker in detecting bacteriemia and febrile neutropenia because it has a better diagnosis reliability. In healthy patients, procalcitonin is less than 0.15 nanograms per milliliter. If a patient's procalcitonin is greater than 2.0 nanograms per milliliter, there is a higher risk of sepsis or septic shock on the first day of ICU admission. If the ranges are less than 0.5 nanograms per milliliter, there is a lower risk of progression to sepsis and or septic shock. 0.5 to 2.0 nanograms per milliliter is when non-infectious non conditions such as burns, trauma, surgery, or cardiogenic shock occur. Reference values have not been established for babies under 72 hours old. This slide focuses on procalcitonin levels and what they mean in patients. Low levels in a seriously ill person means that there is a low risk for sepsis, but you cannot exclude it. Low levels in patients may mean that the patient's symptoms may not be from a bacterial infection, but instead may be a viral infection. Low levels in patients also can mean that the patient may have a localized infection that is not systemic or a systemic infection that is less than six hours old. High levels in patients mean that there's a high probability of sepsis or possibility of current sepsis. A serious bacterial infection such as meningitis may also be present. Procalcitonin levels are usually collected by venipuncture. Generally, laboratories would like a red top tube or a lithium heparin tube. Plasma or serum is needed for testing. Supplements with biotin may affect the results, so the patient should try not to consume biotin within 72 hours of collection. If being sent out to a reference lab, generally you should refrigerate or freeze the specimen. Gross lipemia is fine for testing, but gross hemolysis should not be sent. Different specimen requirements are required for different labs in terms of tube type and temperature stability. You need to look on the reference lab's website to figure out what specimen requirements are needed. There's many different methods of testing to test procalcitonin, but this slide focuses on Mayo Clinic laboratories. They use a homogeneous automated immunofluorescence assay on the bronze cryptor analyzer. The cryptor uses time-resolved amplified cryptate emission technology based on a non-radioactive transfer of energy between two fluorescent tracers, the donor tracer European cryptate and the acceptor tracer XL665. A sheet polyclonal antibody against calcitonin is labeled with European cryptate and a mouse monoclonal antibody is labeled with XL665. The procalcitonin is sandwiched between the two antibodies and when the complex is excited with the laser, the energy is fluoresced and measured in nanograms. Another method of testing a test for procalcitonin is the radiometer's acute care AQT90 flux procalcitonin PCT assay. This is an in vitro diagnostic assay for quantitative identification of procalcitonin in EDTA or lithium heparin whole blood or plasma specimens. It delivers results in under 20 minutes, enabling clinicians to administer therapy to patients promptly. It is a point of care test with improved sample turnaround times. It has excellent agreements with blood culture results and it has a high correlation with other commercially available procalcitonin testing methods. The last method of testing for procalcitonin we're going to talk about today is the Beckman culture procalcitonin PCT assay. It is intended for the quantitative determination of procalcitonin in serum, EDTA, or lithium heparin plasma. This test method has been FDA CLIA categorized as moderate complexity for use in the Batman culture. AU480, AU680, AU5800, and DXC700 AU clinical chemistry analyzers. It uses an immunoturbinometric methodology and has an 8.5 minute turnaround time. The measuring range is 0.2 to 52 nanograms per milliliter and has ready to use liquid reagents for fast and accurate results. This is the APA Works Cited page, and this concludes my presentation on procalcitonin. If you have any questions about any of the information included in this presentation, you can either ask me or Dr. Folsom, and we'd be more than happy to help. Thank you so much.